Riding on the city of New Orleans Illinois Central, Monday morning rail Fifteen cars and fifteen restless riders Three conductors, twenty-five sacks of mail all along the southbound Odyssey, the train pulls out at Kankakee and rolls along past houses, farms, and fields. Passing trains that have no name, and freight yards full of old black men, and the graveyards of the rusted automobiles. Reverend Jill Martinez, I'm ordained in the Presbyterian Church USA, and I am a homeowner here in the park. I've known Leo ever since he moved here, and he's just such an exciting, wonderful person. We had a lot of things to do and a lot of things on the table we were working on when he passed, and it's just so, so difficult for all of us because of his animated spirit, the love that he has for everyone, his commitment, and his hard-working ability to reach so many people. God is with us and keeping us strong, so I'm going to breathe deeply and know that Leo's here having a heck of a time. He really is. He's been laughing at me all morning long. <laughs> So I hope that you enjoy our time together. We will share a lot of stories. Let us pray. Gracious God, we praise you and thank you for Leo, his wonderful life and everything he shared with so many people. Gracious God, you know we all will miss him. We know he still had a thousand projects to work on. And we know he's quite busy right now, being welcomed into the presence of where he is. Gracious God, we ask that you be with each of us today as we celebrate Leo's life, knowing that we are united in his spirit and his love that he shared. Keep us strong together. Keep us enlightened and show us the way. In your name and for your sake, we pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask Anne to stand and read the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'll be reading from the book of Ezekiel, the 34th chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. Listen for the word of God. For this is what the sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he or she is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines, and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. 
I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, the injured and strengthen the weak, and I will shepherd the whole flock with justice. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. We just need each one of us so much in this time of comfort that we have such a loss. And we just need to know that there is a power greater than all of us looking all over us, tending to us, touching the spirit inside. That spirit unites all of us as one. It's the same spirit. It's the same God. I ask that as we celebrate today, that we dig deep and think about those miracles and moments in Leo's life that really brought us all together at different times. All family and friends, what an exciting life he had, just such an adventurous life. And we just so need to be reminded of that all the time, knowing that he's in comfort right now. And I just, can't you just see him? <laughs> just walking around and just having the time of his life. He was in such pain and it was so difficult. As, you, as it gets to that moment, you are ready. I've had enough, I've had enough. Even though he had so much more to do, he really did. So I ask that you take comfort from each other. You take comfort from the words of scripture. You take comfort from listening and being quiet to the spirit that loves you and guides you. There's so much to share today, but I would like to begin with Karen. <laughs> Karen's gonna share so much of this. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all for coming today uh, to remember Leo. He was a good man. Kind, loving, funny, generous to a fault. I don't know how much you know about his background. You just know the relationship you have with him. So I'll give you a little background on him. He was born in a marriage shelter. <laughs> and uh, maybe that's where he got his love of adventure. Yes, I know. <laughs> this was in the Midlands, the northern part of, uh, of England. And when he was eight, uh, his dad took a job down in uh, Dartmouth. So they moved down to Dartmouth, which is uh, the home of the Royal Naval College. And they reached the starting point of the Mayflower. He left home on a steam train for life in London when he was 15. And he worked for many major stores like Liberties of London, which is a high-class clothing store. While he was pursuing a theatrical career, because that's what he wanted to do. He remembered all the fun and the enjoyment he got out of watching Saturday at the theater, watching those movies. That's what he wanted to do. He met his first love, Jackie, in London, and also lost her there after five years, because she was ready to settle down, and Leo wasn't. He still wanted that adventure. And Jackie and I are still friends to this day, because that was Leo. He kept everyone in his life. It didn't matter if it was his first girlfriend or his two ex-wives. Oh, in fact, the two ex-wives are there at our wedding, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Leo returned to Torbay in the West Country and opened a very successful coffee bar. Um, it attracted a lot of people, including artists like Johnny Cash. He was a guest there. And a little known band called The Beatles, who didn't know if their career was going to last after they had a horrible performance in Plymouth. He went on to co-produce lots of musical groups from the infancy of the music revolution in the 60s, including Dusty Springfield, The Who, The Hollies, and The Rolling Stones. Frustrated with all work and little play while being single, because if his mother didn't like his girlfriend, she would give him a day off. <laughs> anyway, he sold the coffee house, traveled throughout Europe, in, time, in the time when you did need a passport, um, putting a backpack on his shoulder and just becoming an adventurer. He had bullets whizzing past him in Franco ruled Spain, and he loved French, which was unusual for a Brit. <laughs> he met a Swiss family who said, do you know how to sail? <clears throat> well, we all had some sailing experience, but it was all adventure. So he said, of course. And next thing he knew, he was sailing across the Atlantic in a 50-foot catch. 
six weeks, the only thing they saw other than water and waves was empty Coca-Cola. <laughs> anyway, Aaliyah had met up with some people and they were in the Caribbean. And they owned a youth camp up in the Adirondacks who invited him to become a sailing master at their girls' camp. For the next few years, Leo taught the girls in the summer camp and chartered boats in the Caribbean in the winter. Hard life. And when he was out in the Caribbean, it was very easy. All you do was pay a native kid a dollar, and they would dive down and get his lunch and lobster. <laughs> you could do that three times a day. <laughs> anyway, from there, he uh, ended up in New York and New Jersey while awaiting his papers. Um, he became bored with the wave and joined a circus, meeting a belly dancer named Carol from Ohio. He was smuggled in and out of Canada half a dozen times because he had no passport. He was still waiting for it. And thoroughly enjoyed himself because of the adventure and excitement. This was the, um, I guess, what he was looking for in life. He just didn't, do any, didn't like doing the normal, average thing. He taught sailing at a youth camp on Long Island as well, as teaching a producer, Ron Maxwell, of Gettysburg and Gods and Generals. Uh, even though they had a broken mast, they still came in third. Once in L.A., he put together the sailing program for UCLA, causing a storm of protest when he insisted the school needed a dock if they were to have a sailing program. Well, duh, if you had some boats, where else are you going to land, you know? Anyway, he got, duck, he got the dock built, only to get fired over it, because the board didn't want or approve of the dock. Go figure. Anyway, in June of 72, his brother Steve was getting married, so Leo and Carol took off for England for the wedding. By August, Leo's papers still hadn't come through, so Carol proposed, and they were married in the city park in true hippie style. Shortly thereafter, his papers came through, so they returned to the U.S., and they traveled cross country in true hippie style in a Volkswagen bus, smoking a doobie. <laughs> <laughs> the marriage didn't last, and Leo's career finally took off. He was in many commercials, movies, a music video, and appeared in national TV. His favorite parts being in the kick We got the spelling bee champ. We got the kid from Annie. And we got the 13 year old going to UCLA. But we still need one more. What about this? It's from the Suarita Elementary School Bugle. Three sisters and a brother run a corporation called Kidco. They collect horse manure and sell it as fertilizer. Not exactly appetizing, is it? <laughs> Executive Secretary Betty Cessna confided to the Bugle that this summer Kidco cleared more than six thousand dollars a month. My little experiments to pay for. Oh, well, you, you're the hero of the working class, H.G. Free love's the only sort they can afford. Oh, Lord, don't start him on socialism. In heaven's name, we'll have to listen to a sermon on the subject. Oh, Father will well, be here. You oughtn't that. to call it a sermon. No, you've done you it. know I don't believe in organized religion. No. No. A socialism is the path mankind oh, must inevitably oh, tread on its okay. way to a utopian the society. The case right, you know. We've heard all that. What's this great <laughs> announcement you brought us all to supper for? Have yes, you found right. the cure for gravity? I think I'd prefer to wait until we were all here. Who's missing? Thought we were all here. Dr. Stevenson is here, Mr. Wells. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Turner. Would you send him in? Oh, you were the poor old man. Good evening, John. Gentlemen, good evening. Hello. Gentlemen, I have called you together tonight to bid you farewell. Farewell? Where are you off to? Oh, going abroad? Well, another holiday in Scotland, eh? No. No, I am going travelling. But I'm not leaving London. Indeed. I do not expect to be leaving my laboratory. Mm -hmm. Riddles again. Gentlemen, I am talking about traveling through time in a machine constructed for that very purpose. Electric light, gentlemen, courtesy of Thomas Edison from modern Prometheus. Good heavens. You were really serious. Good God. I don't believe it. You've actually built the bloody thing. Well, free love has paid for most of it. This cup catches the rays of the sun, converting its heat to electricity here. Electricity does the rest, juxtaposing fields of energy, creating friction. The result is an ever-increasing series of reactions that lifts or literally rotates the machine out of one time sphere into another. The cruising speed is two years per minute. You can go into the past or future at will. Two years per minute? Acceleration will keep the machine and its occupant outside all time spheres in a conscious but vaporized state. How do you determine which direction you're journeying? Well, if you rotate to the west, you gain yesterday's. To the east, you accumulate tomorrow's. Balderdash. Go north, you get to Glasgow. <laughs> I can't agree with you. Check. Really, you astonish me, H.G. In the midst of all your theorizing, you manage to ignore the fact. The evidence of human history is that we live in a cosmic charnel house. Mankind has not changed for 2,000 years. We hunt, we're hunted. That's how it is. That's how it shall always be. The future will prove you wrong. The future will tell. Anyway, I have just one question for myself. When do you leave? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Human frailty at last. Oh. Well, to be quite candid, I haven't quite worked up the nerve. Uh, first time H.G. ever lacked nerve. No, but I will. All I've got to do is to set the date and activate the switches in sequence. Of course you'll find it. And I'll inherit the Hope Diamond. Check back her. How does he do it? Not again. Every time. Well, I know how he thinks, that's all. One day I shall win. Yes, when you learn how I think. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Wells, but there are two gentlemen here from Scotland Yard who'd like a word with you. Their name Matt Dory, who did all the travel for the Keys and the Lakers, plus various artists, and he met where he met tons of characters. At a rock concert in Oakland, he introduced Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath, only to look out into the audience to see that the crowd was scarier than the band was. <laughs> <laughs> we all love the King's Head in Santa Monica spending thousands of hours there, drinking with the British actors and musicians. He even ended up with his own photograph on the wall. And he claimed to have paid for the owner's first Mercedes from all the time spent there. His favorite drinking partner was Patrick McGoy of Danger Man fame. And they started drinking at, God, we did at 6 a.m. in the morning, when the pub first opened, and continued until someone else came in. Oh, a new and fresh victim to talk to and tell their stories and jokes to. Leo and I met on Hollywood Boulevard, which is a strange place to me, but if you heard Leo tell the story, I was wearing men's clothing and he was in women's. <laughs> Sounds good, but it wasn't true. I was going to school there and he was across the hall looking to take over uh, an agent's office. Uh, I would stop by each morning and after lunch to say hi to Carter and give him a big hug because his wife treated him extremely badly. Um, she was an RFP and he didn't know what that is. And this one day, um, there was a, this blonde man in the office with Carter. And out of the blue, Carter says, doesn't she look good for having talked to us? And the blonde guy looked at me and did a double take and maybe a triple take. And my reply was, I only have two daughters. Well, when I went to leave the class, he followed me out into the hall and asked me out. 
He said he and his friend had a boat and dry dock for repairs, but I'd like to come and help paint the bottle. <laughs> we did meet up on Sunday, and that was the beginning of our relationship. And guess what? Who's the first people I got to meet? His friends? Carol, his ex wife. <laughs> <laughs> he went back to promoting comics and musicians, including the legendary singer Glenn Yarbrough, and then eventually Robert Anthony Avilas, who was a seventh string electric violinist who played with the rock band. Strange combination, but boy, did it work. But come September 11th, it ended the entertainers wanting to travel. So he took the opportunity to work with the Union Jack newspaper, the only national newspaper in the U.S., where he wrote a monthly column with me while running the L.A. office this for more than 12 years. They became the conduit to the British community nationwide, and I mean, we would get phone calls from all over the country wanting information about, well, we're coming to L.A. Where's a good place to eat or to stay? And, and, I mean, gee, if you read the paper or the columns, you would already know because we were taking events and functions at all these hotels and the pubs, especially the pubs. Along the way, he took up tall ship sailing, first on the Kai Sei with Captain Stephen Taylor, then moving on to the Channel Islands Harbor out there in Oxnard, where Captain Taylor had another tall ship called Bill of Rights. Over the five years he spent at the Bill teaching 22,000 plus students, he did all the photos and video of their classes and trips, spending many watches at the helm and enjoying the adventures completely. I remember helping him cart all of his camera equipment and his pillow and his sleeping bag and everything out to the boat, helping him get on board, throwing and casting the line up on board, and walking away and saying, I'm free! <laughs> Peace and quiet, him out. <laughs> anyway, along the way, uh, Steve ended up with another ship called the Harvey Damage. Steve ran into problems because he inherited the crew. Usually, when you're going on a long sail, sail, you get to pick and choose the people you're going to sail with because you want somebody you know, that's competent, kind of, sort of, and you're a good personality. Well, the problem was Steve inherited the crew, had no choice. So over, they started their sale from Maine, from Portland, Maine, and by the time we all heard from Steve, he was in deep trouble because there were two men on board the ship. One thought he knew everything about sailing, and the other one knew he knew everything about sailing, and both of them wanted to be captain. <laughs> so Steve called, telling me, Leo, I need you. And I said, where? He said, Key West. I said, I'll have him packed in three days. <laughs> <laughs> then I got him going to Leo. <laughs> but Leo flew, he got all the shots, flew down to Miami, and then shoveled out to, to Key West, only to run into problems with the government. They didn't want the, the, the tall ship leaving to Key West and going to Cuba. Why? They went back to the 1850s, I think, or 1860, and used a little known um, sailing law that said any captain is not allowed to transport you, you, or you as an American citizen to a foreign country to spend a million dollars. Well, this went against everybody's nature because aren't we going to live in a free country? But when the government says no, they mean no. So for some reason, the, the company flew in another captain from Washington State, and all of a sudden the government was willing to let the, the, the ship leave and sail to Cuba. And when Leo got there, he fell in love with Cuba. He literally would have moved there. Except I was American, and I wasn't allowed to go to Cuba. He was British, he could go. But he just loved it. Loved the people there, so open and friendly. This happened when Leo was 76 years old. Now, this is a little bit old for people to be saved. Uh, yes, his legs weren't as strong or as sturdy as they used to be, and some of the people on board the ship always kept a hand out to re reach to him to help steady him. But everybody enjoyed it. He just 
he went out in style because this was his last sale, and he got to go to Cuba, which he never ever dreamed of being in. He fought cancer for three and a half years, but he went out peacefully on May 17th of this year. We all have two great loves, animals and music. While in his early 20s, he was part of the Hunt Saboteurs Endeavor, who protested the right into the hounds. And you can read the article that's on the board. Um, when we would walk the beach, he always stopped the pet dogs, cats, parrots, you name it. He was faithfully unfaithful to our cats, as he had come home with all sorts of strange smells like him. The cats didn't know what a dog was, but they were they smelled like. <laughs> Some years ago, he was selling a large ship's wheel. This young lady came over to buy it, so naturally, the gentleman that he was, he helped her out to her car with it, where he met her German Shepherd. He assisted she bring the dog into the house for me to see. This was how we met Laura, who we quickly adopted as granddaughter and her dog Zoe as great granddaughter. <laughs> this April, Aurora bought a black shepherd puppy, flying to Georgia and back on the same day on a Thursday. By Saturday evening, she had the puppy over to her house for a play date with Leo. On Leo's last day, she brought the puppy over after work. Piper came running into the living room, right to Leo, right into his lap, giving Leo tons of puppy kisses and lips on the ear. Leo was able to throw the ball for Piper three times before he lost his energy. Aurora then helped me get Leo into the hospital bed and settled. No problem. Puppy couldn't get to Leo anymore. So up the dog went into the bed with Leo for more puppy kisses and nips on the ear. Leo went out with many smiles from his time with Piper, and he couldn't be happier. His second love was music. He wished he could sing, but as I've said for many years to many people, people pay Leo not to sing. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't carry a tune, though maybe for eight bars, that was about it. He was thoroughly in his album and on musicians. He booked many groups in England where he had a contract with a local hotel for shows. There was one time he hired the Rolling Stones, and in those days, the early days of the band, they already had a reputation for destroying hotel rooms. And on their very first night in the hotel, and painted, guess what? The manager kicked them out. So, what did they all do next? Somehow he talked Eddie H into picking up the band at their house. Andy H. was always a very familiar person. And when I finally met her, she was well in her 80s, and she was damn scary. So I can, can imagine her giving the, uh, the evil eye to the band. Probably did. But the band was under oath to behave as there is no other place in town for them to be put up. Um, they behaved, they had a good concert, and Unfortunately, Leo never saw them again because they went on to bigger and better concerts. Mm -hmm. Great career. Leo very much believed in show business. Without the show, there was no business and vice versa. Everything he did had that in mind. At our wedding, he decided to turn the toasting of the bride and groom into a roasting of them, knowing full well that this would open the door for anyone and everyone to take a poke at him. That's what he wanted. No one disappointed them, and I hope that you won't disappoint today with your stories of Leo. So please, share your life with Leo as you knew it. Who's first up? Or am I going to pick on you? I can play with mother. <laughs> Come here, naughty child. Who wants to speak? Oh, oh, <coughs> there are some people that come to town. So they sent a brief words to be read. Please, yeah. Aurora. Yeah, so the first one is from Nigel. Um, it says, Dear Mary, as chairman of Brit Week and on behalf of the board, I would like to raise a glass to Leo. So, raise a glass. you. A man who face as much as a part of our events at the Union Jack itself. Um, it's no surprise he represented a paper. Um, represented a paper by that name. He was always a welcome face, and his energy brought life to every event he attended. He shall, we shall miss him dearly, but know right now he is angling his camera to catch a picture of Her Majesty as she walks through the pearly gates. Uh, with love, Nigel. 
Theo, you are really missed. I missed hearing your voice across the street and into my house. You, you know, it was just uh, a wonderful, wonderful time. I didn't real, I just didn't realize it was going to be over like this. But um, okay, Michael. We sang right. "Sweet Caroline," and everybody is really happy. And we sent you off in a very, very good way. Love you, Leo. Well, this is to Leo's family, and I just want to share with you what a precious, precious human being. We just, none of us can express how much he means to us, and everything he did, how active he was in the community, and joyous, always laughing no matter what was going on. So, and is this where I look? <laughs> okay. But thank you so much, and I'm glad that everybody turned out to celebrate his life. There's this and so much more. Thank you. Hi, and I would just like to express the, that we appreciate the friendship. We're neighbors in Torrance for almost eight years, and um, we love that um, you appreciate the, the time that we shared with us. So, most importantly, the last uh, time that we had lunch together at the marina, where Leo, despite his pain, took time to um, took the time to meet with us, with the children and, and the family. And my children will forever appreciate the life lessons that you shared with us during that lunch. I know you were ready; he was already in pain, but we appreciate the time that spent with us. And Karen, we're always here for you anytime you can call us. We love you. And yeah, we value our friendship. Uh, uh -huh. We just uh, 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 we stayed there for a while, uh -huh. and then but uh, the impact there is the, with the friendship, little friendship we have. Uh, gay, Leo were able to give some life lessons to our children uh -huh. as they grow up, and they will cherish the the values we have. They get. From Thank, the, you. From Thank you. Thank you, Leo and Karen. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Thank you. I don't know all of you, but my name is Robert Fair. I knew Leo and Karen for the past 13 years. And Leo had a magnetic, uh, just an incredible personality. And I think it served him so well with what he did with photography. I went to many events at the British Consul General and BABC events, and he had that art of being able to put people at ease and have them take their guard down to get the money shot. And that's a lot. And then I look at what he did with the paper and everything he did in the editorials. You could sense it in everything that he wrote. I mean, you just you felt engaged in everything that they did. And he wanted a story. So I have a sailboat that was my dad's. We've had it in the family now for 25 years. And so in 2017, I had a chance to get it back and it left the family for six months. So it was in San Pedro. We had plans for somebody to come and help me get it up to the church. That same day, that person cancels. Leo and a gentleman by the name of Greg Franks, within hours of notice, drive from the church all the way down to San Pedro and board a boat they've never been on. We leave at 9.30 at night to go to Ventura. And he, uh, we're going down the main channel, and all of a sudden, we lose steer. We hit something, a black park in the water, we didn't want it at the time. So here, we haven't even got out of the channel, dead at night, and then from there, the boat's just turning around. Make an emergency call, get ourselves back in the slip, and we had to be off by the next morning if not they were going to charge me for the full 30, 30 days, one day later. Well, Leo and Greg didn't leave my side. They stayed right with me. Daylight, we get up, stress test on the boat, and we made it the next day up to Marina Del Rey. And I will always be forever in that debt for that. Leo was an incredible sailor. Um, he had time, spent a lot of time on the boat. And he looks, the resemblance that he has to my father is absolutely uncanny. So having that chance to spend that time with him on the boat was kind of like having a chance to spend time with my own dad on the boat. It was powerful, it was moving. I'd gone through a painful divorce and Leo and Karen were right by my side. They said, listen, when you're through, they would call me periodically to see how I'm doing. You're gonna get through this. And I got through it. 
and I had a chance to be reconnected with somebody that had been, has been in my life 25 years ago. And Leo had a chance to see that person in photos and hear stories about that person. And I'm so glad that I had that chance for Leo to at least know Nancy that's here today from that connection. And I just look at, you know, you talk about connections in life. I really feel every time that I'm on that boat, there's a picture that's here. This picture that I gave Karen, I have the same picture inside the boat. Leo stays with me, and I know he's with me every day that I'm out on that boat. And I'm so thankful that in the roads of passing in life, my roads crossed with you and with Leo. And he said many times out of that boat, you will find the love of your life, Karen is the love of my life, and I believe it. I thank you for this time. Work by the BABCLA with a Lifetime Achievement Award. 
Leo's sister Diana preceded him two years ago, but his brother Steve still lives in Paint in Devon, where Steve has two daughters, four nieces, and one nephew. Leo is so missed, not only for his smile, his laughter, his naughty stories, and his love for Clara. Mm -hmm. So that is from Julian Campbell. <laughs> My name is Pamela Bennett, my husband Michael Bennett. We are the British Connection store in Torrance. Mm -hmm. I know some of you have been. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. We have great memories of Leo. 20 years ago, he came into our store, we were fairly new at the time, and he said, I need some British flags. Okay. <laughs> Don't think he wanted to paint one, really. <laughs> <laughs> British flags. He said, okay. So he was going to do a performance with some companions <laughs> down in the beach. And so we offered him the flags. So he said, uh, you're welcome to come down here tonight. I've got a lot of comedians. And I'm filming all the comedians to send the videos out to the troops. I can't remember which one it was. Golf, the one. The which one? Troops in the Gulf. In the Gulf. I can't mm -hmm. remember where. But anyway, he was going to do it. So I said, OK, we'll come down and we'll see what we can do. So we had a great time down there. Not terribly busy as regards the British side of it. But Leo was in his element doing his filming over there. Um, what else? Cut so many I can think of. I <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. The Bombardier KTLA Channel 5 with, tech, with uh, uh, faxes that this event was going on. They actually sent a video crew down to the park to film him doing all this stuff. So it was quite an intuitive in what he was doing. Uh, Leo and Karen uh, writing in the newspaper, the Union Jack, every month, always somehow put us in there. <laughs> They would pop into the shop for a cup of tea and say in the newspaper that they have been in to see Pam and Mike and promoted us, promoted us, promoted us. And we never forget that. Thank you, Karen. And then, of course, we joined so many different British societies, right? The Royal Society of St George was the last one. We had so many events to go to, different dinner parties or parties, and put Leo over there. <laughs> Everywhere we went, Leo had his camera. Um, he also managed to invite us to the British Consulate Party, uh, where we met a lot of people up there, including the Consulate of Midway, and got publicity from that. But it was always, I don't know, Leo being in Leo, it was fantastic. But such a sense of humour. He and Michael would go on at each other. <laughs> right? And, um, I used to call him the old fox, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But one thing he did for us, we didn't mention one day we were playing at a, a, a grand opening. He said, leave it to me, I'll organise it for you. And within weeks he gave us a date, and we turned up and there were Jaguars, Rolls Royces, MG cars, the tent. The <laughs> young lady came down, uh, called Julie, I think, right? Yeah, dressed Julie. up in a Union Jack dress. Yeah, 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 and for the past five years or so, we'd come up there every now and again, like to go out for lunch, right? Yes. And he always sit there talking to every dog that went by, didn't he? Baby, <laughs> right? And then we go out for lunch, and then we'd have a lovely afternoon, and then we'd say bye bye. And that was the last time. No, it's so awesome. But he was a great, great man. Into everything, he wanted to do everything. He always wanted to show up a British pub, right? Yes. Local, which unfortunately never happened. Um, what else? I can't think of anything else now, but there were so many stories we could have told you about. I do apologise if you write it down. But we go on and on. But we have our own new stories. And, uh, You've all got fond memories of the air, I know. I'm sure you have, yeah. But anyway, thank you very much for listening. We're missing. I was going to say one thing that I missed um, when I was out there. Oh, every time we used to come up to see Leo and Karen, you know he used to work for the, for the Union Jack newspaper? I'd always bring him the copies of the British Weekly, just to annoy him. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Competition. A competition, that's all it was. But that's all, uh, we'd say we're going to miss him. We really are. Thank you. Leo was Michael's next door neighbor, and he and Karen both looked after Michael. So we, we're very honored to have known him. Well, we miss you already. I uh, can't believe it's nearly a year already. We just love you and we miss you. Take care. I just want to relate a time that Karen was working and we had a 15-ish 
this and lady that was visiting, and I looked to get invited me to go to a pub. Yeah. And I tell you, Leo was all around that pub. He was taking pictures. I was videoing. I was <laughs> <laughs> everything. And they had the, the dancers. It was a wonderful time. Oh, I didn't right. want to go out. I just lost my husband. But they said, come on, let's go. So St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. And uh, pictures of him and Payne, you know, he made friends, you know, like they, they had known each other forever. <laughs> it was a great time. Okay. And you were working. I felt so bad. <laughs> so, and then another thing about uh, him and my dogs. I have two multiples. And he would, you know, he'd have to say, I have to come over. I have to come over. I could hear him. I could go see my dogs. And so. <laughs> He would show up on the porch and they would be on, on the couch and he would get right in the middle. Or if, he, if they weren't out, he'd say, don't worry, you know. And I'd just let them sit. And sometimes I'd go out, and but he was busy talking to them. And they got kisses. Oh my gosh. And they got kisses. So he was very, very happy. Yeah, he, he was uh, his love of animals and his love of people. Who really That's true. Thank you. I called him up and said, what do you want? He said, this and this and this and this and I'll have some biscuits. And the other thing we have to order for him all the time was a giant John mustard. Mustard. <laughs> English mustard, which is quite strong. And I don't know what he did with it, but he said he put it on everything. Is that right? Roast beef. Roast beef? Pork. Chicken. Any kind of meat can have a mustard. But he got to a giant, giant catering size jar of you know, mustard. Anyway, just remember that. <laughs> Oh, thank you to, to Gillian for leaving her messages. Unfortunately, Gillian couldn't be here, right? She's in Utah. She took a job in Salt Lake City. I know, we've just been talking to her and we said we were coming. And unfortunately, she said she couldn't make it. Yeah. Otherwise, she definitely yeah, She wanted to be here. Yeah. Her and Leo would uh, go at, have a go at each other worse than Leo and Mike. <laughs> yeah. And at one time, <laughs> Leo got real upset with me because Jillian was having a good time uh, teasing Leo, and I joined in with her, and he didn't like that. Those <laughs> <laughs> two women against him, <laughs> and he definitely was on the losing end. <laughs> but, you know, such is life, you know, who yeah. cares? You're having a good time, but he, he, that time, that's the only time that he took it personally, and he did talk to me, and I got I always talk to a finger that. <laughs> so from there on, I had to, if Jillian was around, it was a matter of bite my tongue. <laughs> he has such a good sense of humor. Oh. And did you not uh, um, know to read from? No. No, no. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Can we please? Yeah. So before I read the note, um, I'm Aurora. I actually met Leo and Karen off Craigslist. <laughs> um, so you had, Pamela, you had mentioned the pub that he wanted to open up. Well, when he decided not to open up that pub, um, he had posted a big ship, ship wheel, and I'm probably saying it wrong, but um, ship's, ship's wheel, yeah. And uh, I had just moved to Ventura from New York, and I was like, I was so excited to be by the beach, and I said, you know what, I have all this nautical, I love the idea of sailing, I've never been sailing, but I love the idea that I'm by the beach, I feel like I must have this big ship's wheel in my house. And so I've been searching and searching and searching, and I had found one on Craigslist um, that Karen had been responding to my messages for, and um, so I went to go pick up the ship's wheel, and um, Leo came out to greet me and came back uh, it brought us back inside because my dog was in the car, and so she, he said <laughs> that my dog had to meet Karen. So in goes my dog. My dog, you know, you always have to trust who the dog likes, right? If the dog doesn't like someone, you don't go. But if the dog likes someone, and my dog jumped right out of that car, ran right up the stairs, and right into their house, and said, these are good people. Um, so, I, so I went on in, and we spent 45 minutes in the living room just hanging out, chit-chatting like we'd known each other forever. Um, and ever since that day, we've just been really family. It's been such a blessing to have Leo and Karen in my life. I really just, uh, I just love and appreciate them so much. But so that's how we met, and it's just been a blessing ever since. So 
I would like to go ahead and read this letter from Phil and Ruth um, that they wrote for this event because it couldn't be here today. Um, it says, thank you for being a big part of our lives. You are surely missed. The British community is not the same without Leo dashing around and mixing with literally everyone. His laugh was contagious and never had an evil word with anyone as he displayed his skills with a camera and pen, which you love to do. As you know, he had a love for sailing. One of our memories we share today is when Leo asked us to sail to Catalina Island with him and back in the early 80s on a very large sailboat belonging to a friend of his. We met him at the marina on Friday around 5 p.m. It took us all day to get to Catalina as we had no wind and the owner did not want to seize the engine. <laughs> we got there late Saturday. <laughs> I guess the owner wanted everyone to do a bit of work while on his yacht. Leo gave us a few copper pots and a big brass bell to clean with Brasso. Leo then said to us, I'll teach you how to be a sailor. <laughs> Ruth said to Leo, I don't even do this at home, Leo. <laughs> we had a great time trying to sleep on the deck uh, and lots of laughs with Leo during our watch, which was most of the night. We finished on Sunday night. We could hardly walk as we were so dizzy and tired and not from the booze. We were true sailors now. As I remember, Leo got pulled over on the, uh, that night on his way home as the police thought he had been drinking. <laughs> he explained that he was sailing and the officer let him go. So many great stories with Leo over the years. His spirit is probably floating around the sky now taking photos of his new newspaper called Brits in Heaven. <laughs> Love, Phil and Ruth. <laughs>
goes out to hill and dale and byways and ravines and wherever you are, and I'm going to haul you in. No matter who you are, what your experience is, what your background is, because you all belong together. And I will work with you, and I will rule over everyone with justice. And that really is what Leo is all about. And we are all about continuing to share him, his life, his memories of him with each other, and never forget that wonderful, full spirit that unites us all and keeps us all united. Don't forget, I'm going to have a benediction, but we're not over yet. Karen's going to bring a close, but I ask that the Lord bless you and keep you and make her face to shine upon you and give you peace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, this one last part here. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh I remember that. When Leo and I were married, um, I, I told you that he took show business seriously. Well, when it was time for the, the toasts, he turned it into a roast. And that's what I wanted to do here, okay? I would like to do one more thing at Leo's honor, and that's to do a uh, sing a rousing song at the top of your lungs to send him on his way to the next uh, nightclub in the sky, to the next uh, comedy room in the sky, or to the next sailing in the sky. So we're going to play, um, what is it, Sweet Caroline, because that's the only thing I can do on beaches, okay? Where it began, I can't begin to know it. But then I know it's growing strong Wasn't the spring And spring became the summer Who'd have believed you'd come along And Touch it, touch it.
So first off, I just want to say, Leo, you've been an absolute blessing in my life. Um, there's very few people in this world that you can consider lifelong friends and lifelong family members that you just fall into and you happen to meet and they just become part of your forever family. And uh, I'm so blessed to have gotten to meet you and Karen and have all the lasting memories that we have. Um, there's <laughs> so we have lots of stories and I know it's really hard to pick pick just one but I definitely want to make sure that I mention that I know that you have your feelings I know you have feelings and that you're absolutely the most tallest darkest most handsomest man I've ever met in my life and um, I just love that you brought me into your world and you introduced me to so many wonderful people and that we have so many great wonderful lasting memories uh, one memory that I remember we were just talking about it is we were down at the harbor just going for a walk and you just you pet every dog that we walked by every single one and um, you asked this one gentleman if you could pet his dog and uh, he said sure go ahead so you leaned down and you went to go pet him and the dog bit your hand <laughs> and you were bleeding everywhere we we're trying to patch it with the tissue it just wasn't working so we decided to go into the chocolate shop to go ahead and get some band-aids and get you all patched up which worked out perfect and then we were all able to share in making our own chocolate and taking that home for the first time so Something that could have turned out really bad, you found a way to bring joy and laughter to it, and it was absolutely wonderful and lots of fun. So thank you for sharing your family with me, and when your brother and your family came out to visit, and you included me in absolutely everything, and I absolutely love that. So thank you to you and Karen. You guys are wonderful. I am so glad that I've gotten to have you for even just the short few four years that I knew you. So I'll take care of Karen. She's my love. I'll t she's my grandma forever, and don't worry. I give Piper scratches behind the ears every single morning just from you. This is about Leo. Um, I met Leo a long time ago. Um, I'm a coach here at Ventura Camp Fusion. And he likes his soccer, so he'd come down. And he'd, he'd pop into the office every day that he was down. And uh, he'd tell us stories. And to be honest with you, I thought he was telling a load of porky pies. So, <laughs> until I came here, I realised it was true. Um, which shows you just how much of a life that the bloke had. And uh, he was always looking after other people. And he always wanted to have somebody enjoy something. He even put up our, the owner, Ram Beer. He wanted to get him an MBE, which I thought he was joking. But he was actually meant it, so uh, and he was trying always to uh, make people's lives better, and he certainly touched my life and a lot of other people. So for that, I, I love the man. Um, he was a great person, and just in the way that he went out like this, I'm thinking when I go out, this is what I want, you know. Um, I'm, instead of just getting lumped in the ground uh, and everybody going off having a celebration like this. I never thought anything like this would happen. Uh, and I've seen it, and even at the end, the, uh, the Sweet Caroline, that's the song that they sing at all the football stadiums in England after the game. So that, to me, I had to video it. It was, it was something special. So Leo, you're a diamond, mate. No matter where you are, I'll come up and have a beer with you later. All right, thank you. Well, to Leo's family, I wish that you could be here today. We would have loved to have embraced you and to hear more from you personally. But hopefully today, if you experienced enormous love for Leo that we experienced and that we've expressed today. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Sue Wallen. I was uh, Leo's family practitioner. And uh, absolutely one of my favorite patients. We had great visits that Outside of medicine, we talked about his love for sailing, we talked about our love for the Caribbean Islands. Um, he uh, always brought a smile to my face, always full of laughter, full of great stories. Um, definitely will miss him. And uh, it was a beautiful service today to honor him. So I feel, great, feel very grateful that I knew you. Thank you very much. When, uh, when we first met, I knew it was... Um about nine, ten years ago now, 2013, nine years ago. So, and uh, he was delivering the British newspaper and he'd, um, 
he'd come with these big packs of newspapers and he was one of the writers, weren't he? He had a column. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, when he found out that I was British, he was like taking me all over, taking me to the British shop, the fish and chip shop in Santa Barbara and all the different places. And uh, we got on straight away, didn't we, from there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we become good friends. And then he uh, talked you into going with him over to Costco to pick up that, that uh, pick up shed, shed yeah. and take it home. And we ended up like dragging that big heavy, big heavy shed, weren't it? And then we, uh, he was always down at the harbour. He loved the boats. And uh, the biggest thing, his smile, weren't it? Do, do you remember his, smi his smile and his enthusiasm? And he always liked business and uh, different things to do and like coming up with different ideas and who, who he could like introduce me to. Oh yeah, he was and, very big on that. Right because up to the end. Because he wanted you to do well with your business. Yeah. But he was so proud of you and how good the business became, how big mm. it became. So yeah, so he did all right. And, and he did. Uh, and his love for dogs. I've got two dogs in the car actually, and I've just got a second one. So the first one, he was like making a fuss of the, you know, Oliver and uh, any dog what came in the harbour and he was sat on the bench and he'd be, oh. Any dog is fair game the, pe the people was like, right, okay, now we're done talking now and we'll go and play with the dogs then. <laughs> or any, straight away, like, you know, so he was a keen lover of dogs and he, he's, uh, he'd be sadly missed one, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, yeah, so I'm not going to break down. So, yeah, keep it nice. <laughs> and, uh, happy buddy was a really good, gentle guy. You know, like a really nice guy. Um, always enthusiastic and lover of life. Just a nice guy, really. Cool. Yeah. 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 Yeah.